one of the colors in America's autumn and has been since 1869 when Princeton and Rutgers played in the first game and later when Harvard and Yale started their rivalry. College football has become a part of our lives and its traditions and symbols a part of our culture. From Pop Warner, Alonzo Stagg, and John Heisman, great men were drawn to the game. And as it grew, so did its legends, Newt Rockney, The Bear, Joe Paterno, and Tom Osborne. From out of the dust and soil of its classic conflicts, heroes were born. Jim Thorpe, the galloping ghost Red Grange, the Four Horsemen of Notre Dame, Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, Blanchard and Davis. And tonight, one legend will leave the game after 25 years and countless compelling moments at Nebraska. Tom Osborne makes his final tribute to the game he loves tonight. And a college football folk hero, Peyton Manning, spirited and strong in body and heart, raised with a passion for the game, will play his last as a volunteer. Tennessee and Nebraska, more college football history tonight. One team hails from the South, the other from America's Heartline, a heartland. And tonight they meet in Miami, the Tennessee Volunteers and the Nebraska Cornhuskers in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Tonight is Tom Osborne's final game after a 25-year career as head coach of Nebraska. He's won two national championships. He's averaged an eye-popping 10 wins a season. Nebraska's success rests on Scott Frost, the first quarterback in Husker history to rush and pass for 1,000 yards in a single season. His counterpart on Tennessee is Peyton Manning playing in his final collegiate game, capping a career that is already legendary. His love of the game brought him back to play his senior season. And the man on whom Peyton will rely to share the Volunteers' offensive load is Jamal Lewis, the leading freshman rusher in the country. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome to the College Football Today Fourth Division pregame show. I hope you're enjoying the new year. I'm joined once again by my partners, Craig James and Lou Holtz. And gentlemen, despite what you may have heard last night, Michigan has not won the national championship yet. I guarantee they haven't won a national championship yet, and they know it. They had a great year, but you go to bed the night before the voting, and you have no idea how the, the people are going to possibly vote. I said a few days ago that I was going to wait on my vote to cast in. I was going to watch both football games. Michigan's made their statement. Now we're going to see Nebraska in this game. And keep in mind, at least I am right now, that the Big Ten opponents of Michigan are 0-6 in bowl games this year. And the SEC, they're 10-0 over the last two years. Enough said. Tennessee's a good football team. Hey, the SEC hasn't lost a bowl game since two years ago when Nebraska annihilated Florida. All right, let's put one thing to rest. The Rose Bowl last night, the last second here at the end of the game, spiking the ball, Ryan Leaf. Lou, did Washington State deserve one more play from the 27th of Michigan? If I was a coach, I'd say yes, but the official said no, and that's all that matters. Everything else is irrelevant. Hey, get over it, America. I mean, Michigan won the football game. Great football team, undefeated. Yep, they did their part. Earlier, Craig caught up with Tom Osborne as he arrived at the stadium for some final thoughts before the coach's final game. Everybody in America wants to know, is Nebraska playing for national championship? Well, we hope so, uh, Craig. Uh, you know, some things we can't control. We can't control the voters, how people perceive. We just got to hope we can play better than Tennessee does tonight. But uh, I think we're really ready to play a great football game. We've got a very good team, and so I'm kind of excited about it. Your emotions on the day, knowing this is the last one after so many years as a football coach, what do they feel like? Well, I feel about the same as I always do. You know, you're a little bit, a little bit nervous, but more anticipation, and so it's going to be a lot of fun. Did you take note of anything like this is the last bus ride? This is the last time to walk with the players? I, I didn't think about that, but now that you mentioned it, I guess it was. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you, Coach. Okay.
He never changes. His even emotions, unwavering Tom Osborne. The other story, really, for the last four weeks, the condition of Peyton Manning's knee. He says it's as close to 100% as possible. What do you think, Craig, you'll see tonight? And one thing about this thing, from an X and O standpoint, Peyton Manning is the guy that goes back three steps, gets rid of the ball, five steps, gets rid of the ball. But the number one issue he'll do, we'll deal with tonight in this ball game is the weather, the windy conditions out here. This is one of those deals where, look at the wind, gusts up to 32 miles per hour. The big boys up front with the humidity, they're going to sweat. But here's the thing, wide receivers downfield, that ball, the deep ball, will float. They have got to keep their eye on the ball because it's going to move on them, Coach. If Peyton can't play, his backup is T. Martin. We tried to recruit T. Martin. He's a great quarterback. He came to Tennessee because he wanted to play in a game like this. The only thing that might happen, he might play a year earlier than he thought. Yeah, if he has to play, remember, he's only thrown 16 passes in two seasons. And now I'm pleased to introduce the newest member of our CBS family, Armin Kate, and welcome Thanks, to Jim. CBS. Nice to be here. We've been talking about Peyton. You spent some time with him this week. I did. You know, last year we wondered whether Peyton Manning would even return for his senior year. This year we wonder whether his decision was worth it. Well, that depends on who you talk to. For three years, it was Peyton's place. Home to heroics that left a young man debating the decision of a lifetime last spring. Become the darling of the NFL draft and earn a king's ransom. Or return to school in a community with about as much at stake. I made up my mind, and I don't expect to ever look back. I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. Yeah! I really didn't do it to make a statement. Uh, you know, people ask me why you did it, and I really think I was selfish in my decision. I did what I wanted to do. Those words may prove costly. Despite throwing 36 touchdowns and setting several SEC records this year, Manning is no longer the consensus number one pick. After a crushing loss to Florida and remarkably the Heisman Trophy race, in some eyes, he's not even the best quarterback in the draft. It was a monumental mistake. I couldn't believe that a guy would turn down a guarantee of $25, $30 million to play for Bill Parcells and the New York Jets to be the king of the largest media market in the world. Everybody should want to go to the NFL. That's real healthy. But just to bypass college fast, whether you use three or four years to go through it, and just to get out, that's wrong, I think. While you're here, you need to play for the love of the game, play for your university and enjoy it, and then make the next step. Clearly, no one profited more from Manning's step back than the state of Tennessee. According to this study, the football team generated nearly $40 million in local income last year. This season, Manning Mania helped produce millions more in record TV, ticket, and concessions. And that's just on campus. Well, certainly in terms of this year's economic impact from the football season, it was worth a lot more to the business community to have Peyton here in terms of nights in hotels and restaurants and sales of souvenirs than it was to the university. And so the business community had a lot at stake. The, the impact that he had on the store is this is a perfect example right here. This, this would have a whole lot more merchandise on it. It's impossible to ignore his economic impact, as it is to put a price on moments like this, or this. Memories of a season Peyton Manning likely lost millions to remember. A season and young man college football will not soon forget. I wouldn't change one thing about my senior year, about my entire career. I would not change one thing. People, you know, want to pick at things, look at things like that. I, I did things the way I wanted to this year, and uh, I wouldn't change a thing. The agents I talked to said Peyton's decision to stay in school may have cost him as much as $10 million in contracts, bonus, and endorsement money. They also said if he has a great game tonight, he makes up a whole lot of that money. You know, I think it's amusing. As exasperated as these agents are, they don't understand that's not his motivation. Lou, how would you frame his senior year at Tennessee? He came back for the right reason. Not for money. He came back because he loved Tennessee. He loved the game. Wanted to win a conference championship, which he did. Should have won the Heisman. Tennessee's better because he came back. College football is better because he came back. We need more Peyton Manning. I agree with all that. You know, we watched Ryan Lee play on national TV against a good defense. Now it's time to watch Peyton Manning against a big-time team. How's he going to perform? Guarantee NFL scouts out there watching. All right, Craig. Armin, thank you for that report. Jim. Coming up, a look at the life and times of Nebraska head coach Tom Osborne when we continue from the FedEx Orange Bowl after this.
welcome back to the FedEx Orange Bowl where they're getting set for tonight's showdown. Junior high back Amon Green carries on the Husker tradition of heralded backs. He finished second in the nation in rushing. There will be another head coach on the field tonight. Tennessee's Phil Fulmer. He's 4-1 and one in bowl games. There he is meeting with Tom Osborne. And his success recently was rewarded with a contract extension to the year 2003. 25 years, 25 bowls, 25 seasons with at least nine wins. You might wonder how a record of such sustained excellence was achieved by Coach Tom Osborne. But as Michelle Tafoya discovered, it all becomes clear when you learn about Tom Osborne, the man. something that I don't think I'll ever, uh, you know, get over is, is just my fascination with football. I've been very, very fortunate to have been just in one place, let alone a place that is uh, very important to me. Uh, you know, I like the people here, I like the work ethic, I like their values. It's a state that I'm very comfortable with and, uh, and have grown to, to really care about. Osborne's character has its roots in Hastings, Nebraska, where his grandfather played on the football team. A man of conviction, he later became a minister. Tom's father, Charles, also played football at Hastings College. After he graduated, he became a traveling salesman, but always carried a football uniform in the trunk of his car, forever in search of a game. Tom developed a sense of responsibility early, when his father's service in World War II kept him away from home for five years. I really didn't know him when he came back. I was 10 years old, and, and uh, he liked athletics, and uh, I, I wanted to please him. And so I think that's really how I first got into athletics, was the, uh, uh, just trying to, to do the things that he, he really enjoyed and, and liked and admired. Tom was named the best athlete in the state of Nebraska his senior year of high school. Turning down scholarship offers from Nebraska, he went on to star in three sports at Hastings College. never been easy for Tom Osborne. He tried the ministry, but missed football. He was hired as an assistant coach at Nebraska by the legendary Bob Devaney. He took over for Devaney, and the program flourished. But there was doubt. Tom Osborne's teams couldn't win the big one. Nebraska will go for two. win a national championship, you had to go for the win. And I felt probably the players would uh, would only respect going for the win. They'd won 12 straight. They thought they were a great team. And so uh, I thought that that's what they would want. Tom Osborne finally won a national championship, two of them in fact. But there was criticism that his success had come at the expense of his program's integrity. There have been some bumps along the road, obviously. But you just do what you think you need to do. I think every, everyone has to, to deal with, uh, with criticism at times and with problems. And you ask players to come 1,500, 2,000 miles away from their home to, to uh, and basically because they trust you. And uh, it's very difficult then when things don't pan out quite the way you'd like for you to then abandon them. like a lot of people you're always not quite sure you measure up and so I think I, I really uh, spent a lot of my life trying to please my father and like everybody uh, or a lot of people at least go through life in, in some way trying to satisfy uh, something that originated a long time ago While he does suffer from a mild heart condition, Coach Osborne insists his health was only a contributing factor to his decision, the primary reason being he wanted to spend some more time with his family. The last five years, 59-3, and three, did not lose a home game his last five seasons. Coach, you went against him twice. What's his legacy? Well, he's a great coach, but the thing I remember most about him is his willingness to help other coaches to make them better football coaches. And the coaches may reward him in their voting. Yeah, and the thing that I remember the most about the guy is, you know, when all of 
this power game was at Nebraska. That's what he had. Big, strong guys that couldn't run a whole lot. He readjusted his recruiting philosophy, brought speed to Nebraska, and competes with everybody in America. Earlier, volunteer quarterback Peyton Manning was honored for his academic achievements at Tennessee, and Craig was there for the occasion. I'm here with Al Berkeley, president of NASDAQ, who has a special presentation for us. On behalf of the NASDAQ stock market, it is with great honor that I present this check for $5,000 to the University of Tennessee on behalf of Peyton Manning, the NASDAQ Scholar Athlete of the Year. By achieving an outstanding academic record, Peyton Manning is preparing for competition in an arena even bigger than football and a more important game, the game of life. Peyton is an example for all of us to follow. We at the NASDAQ salute you, Peyton Manning, as everyone at this game and those watching this game salute you. I'd like to thank NASDAQ for presenting me with the Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. I'm both honored and proud to receive the award on behalf of the University of Tennessee. I've always been taught that you have to balance your time between academics and athletics, but academics have to come first. And I've tried to do the right things both on and off the field, and it's very nice to be honored with an award such as this. Next, one lucky football fan will get a shot at a million dollars in the Gillette Touchdown Challenge that's coming up live when we continue after this. Welcome back to the FedEx Orange Bowl. Tennessee and Nebraska just a few moments away, but right now let's go to our colleague Ed Cunningham who's down on the field for the Gillette Touchdown Challenge. Welcome, Ed. Thanks, Jim. We're here with Terry Pledger who will try a pass from 10 yards for $1 million in the Gillette Touchdown Challenge. His coach of the week has been Bernie Kozar. Bernie, any last words of encouragement? We're excited. We're going to thank Gillette. And let's get him, Terry. Terry, you ready to go? Ready to go. Let's do it. Guys, what? Gillette, the director of sports marketing, to present you, Terry, with that huge check for $1 million. Jim. Terry, congratulations. On behalf of the Gillette Company and all its employees, I'm very pleased to present you with a check for $1 million. Jim Nance, we have a new millionaire in Florida. Back to you across the field. All right, way to go, Terry Pledger. Maybe it's a night for the passers. I know this, Lou. He made as much money in one pass as you made the whole season doing his job. I'm here because I made it under the salary cap, but I want to say this. I wouldn't trade that million dollars to have the thrill and the excitement I've had over the years of being on the sideline in games like this. Uh, you know, this is a ball game where we can watch. It's pretty much simple for me. If Wistrom and Peter at Nebraska can get to Peyton Manning, the ball game's over with. That offensive line at Tennessee, the biggest burden of the game, left on their shoulders. All right, coming up, the FedEx Orange Bowl, and we'll see you later. But right now, let's send you to the gentleman who will be calling the game. Sean McDonough and Terry Donahue, take it away. Thank you very much, Jim. Happy New Year, everybody. Certainly a tough act to follow what we just saw from Terry Pledger, but these two teams will try tonight. And obviously, since Michigan's victory in the Rose Bowl yesterday, the big question is, can Nebraska get a piece of the national title? Well, Sean, there's no question the pollsters have flip-flopped this year. Teams that have been ranked number one who have won but not been impressive enough have been dropped to number two. Michigan had a hard-fought victory against the number seven team in the country, Washington State, yesterday by five points. But Nebraska plays the number three team in the country tonight, Tennessee. If they win big, if they're impressive, some of those pollsters will flip-flop again. And if Nebraska is to win and win impressively, they'll have to deal with one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, Peyton Manning. Well, Peyton Manning has been hurt prior to this game. He's going to play tonight. 
to me, the key is the offensive line of Tennessee. They have got to do a great job protecting Peyton Manning or that Nebraska defense will knock him out of the game. If they knock him out of the game, Tennessee will go to their backup quarterback, T. Martin. T. Martin is a player who's not played a lot, but he's a versatile athlete. And remember, mobile quarterbacks at times in the past have been effective against the Nebraska defense. And while Tennessee does most of its damage through the air, Nebraska does it on the ground. They're the number one offense in the nation, the number one rushing offense as well, and the key man is their quarterback, Scott Frost. Well, Tennessee, if they expect to win, they must stop Scott Frost. At times, they will have two defenders assigned to him. He is the heart and soul of this Nebraska offense. Scott Frost can beat you throwing the ball or running the ball. He has rushed for over 1,000 yards. He has also thrown for over 1,000 yards one of only 11 players in the history of the NCAA to do that. We'll be back for the coin toss. It won't be a coin worth a million dollars. We had a throw worth a million dollars from Terry Fledger a moment ago.